I'm always encouraging people to gather information about their ancestors in between the time they discover them and take them to the temple. Let me demonstrate the power of this idea. If I'm going to use the church's system for finding ancestors and taking them quickly to the temple known as Ordinances Ready, I simply come to the temple tab, come down, click Ordinances Ready, and it will give me the opportunity to select the kind of ordinances that I want to perform. If I was going to perform initiatory, it will look for initiatory ordinances that are available. It will first go to my reserve tab, and then it will go to ordinances that have been shared with the temple. If they can't find any that have been shared with the temple, they'll go and look on my tree for people that might need in initiatory ordinances. You can see how quickly they found five ordinances for me, and they're all from the temple. I don't have any in my reserved list, and they didn't need to go to my tree. So um, five of my relatives have shared initiatories with the temple that I can now take to the temple. I click the View People tab, and I could at this point just take them to the temple, but I don't want to do that. First of all, I don't want to take somebody with no first name, and so I'm going to uncheck uh, that person. And then as I look at these others, I always want to just quickly look at their person page and see if I can correct and fix information or add to uh, individuals that are missing from their family. So if I do Maynard Wilson first, I'll click and I'll open his person page. And when I look at Maynard Wilson's person page, I just want to do a quick overview of what we've got. I have an inaccurate birth date and no death date. And then when I come down to the family, I see there's no spouse, although I do have good parents and siblings. So what I'd like to do is see if I could find some information to help me correct and complete what's missing. Um, if I can find sources to do that, that would be wonderful. Always right here in the research help is where I first look for um, record hints that might be waiting. That's where the church has gone out, or the, the um, family search computers have gone out and tried to find sources among the billions of sources that FamilySearch has access to. Uh, they didn't find any in this instance. Uh, that's not surprising because of how vague the information is. However, if I go to one of these tabs down lower, the FamilySearch tab is saying to me, I, we don't have a source that we're 97 percent sure matches your individual, but we've got some other sources. Do you want to look at those? Or I could look at Ancestry and find my past. I'm going to go ahead and click the family search link. And again, what it's doing is going out and trying to find matches with my vague information. And it's saying, because your information's vague, we can't guarantee it within 97% accuracy, but here's some we found. Well, Maynard Wilson, who has a mother of Martha E. and brother Burton, uh, and then uh, Delpha, let, let me go back here. The reason I'm, I've looked at this before and they're um, Burton and Delphia uh, so, and Martha, so you know that this is a good match. Um, the Bertha and um, Susan are uh, uh, wife and children that are living in the home at the time. It's even better with this one, um, William, Martha, and then the actual kids. When uh, you come back here, you can see that he has two sources and they are the 1910 and 1920 census and so that's what I was just looking at. So I'm not real excited about these but now I start getting into some interesting ones because this World War II draft registration tells me that his birthday is 30 September 1903 and I've still got <coughs> Mother Martha E. Uh, now I come to two others that I really like. I've got a, a marriage record with a wife named Mary Ethel Bennett, and I've got a um, find a grave which has that same birth date of 30 September 1903. These are in Oklahoma, and so I'm going to go ahead and just quickly uh, attach the, um, the find a grave reference. And so let me go ahead and view it first of all. I can look at it here and I can see the information that's been indexed. I'm going to go ahead and click on this to just take a, a quick look at it. I've got a picture of his uh, 
tombstone. I've got the actual indexed information. And then I notice that the parents are William R. and Martha Eliza Fakes. When I come back to my original um, Maynard Wilson, Martha Eliza Fakes and William R. So this is my person. These would be the, the siblings if I looked them over closely. So I'm excited about attaching this record. I will review it and attach it. And you can see that I've got no death date currently, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that in and the burial. I come down here and I say, what is um, my reason for attaching this? It's because it validates birth and death information. And then I just attach it. That's how easy it is to attach a record hint. I'm going to go back to Maynard now that I've attached that source. And um, you can see that uh, I now have um, a death date and a burial um, date and place. So that's a nice improvement. I um, still don't have that spouse, so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go ahead and open up that family search uh, historical records. And oh, incidentally, if I come here, it doesn't have um, the spouse um, listed at this point, but it does have a child, Mary Grace Wilson. And if I click on Mary Grace Wilson, it tells me a little bit about her, but what you'll notice is that her parents are Mary Ethel Bennett and Maynard Perry Wilson. So Maynard Wilson, that I haven't yet added in the, the Perry to, um, I've got here Maynard Perry Wilson in Find a Grave. He's always called Maynard Wilson everywhere else. We'll go ahead and add in Perry and say that that was validated on Find a Grave. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now, as you recall, when I came here, I have this marriage record right here, and it's Mary Ethel Bennett. And what that we just, we just validated on the one way with Find a Grave that um, their child has that mother. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, and look at this. Now, what I want to show you before I review and attach it is one other way to determine for sure, because I don't want to attach a spouse that's not really the spouse. So I've got Maynard P. Wilson born in 1904, um, and Oklahoma is where things are happening, so I'm feeling pretty confident that Mary is the one. I had one other intersection. When I look at the actual picture of the image, there are three parts to this. The first part is telling me that Maynard P. and, and um, Mary Ethel, Maynard born um, uh, in um, Oklahoma, and, um, and Ethel two years after him. Uh, you see they're born, it's 26, so he was born, in, uh, born 22 years before that, so it's 1904, so this is all looking good. But when I come down here, to the marriage um, certificate, I have Martha E. Wilson as one of the witnesses. And that's the last straw for me to feel comfortable um, that, that I have the, um, the right record here. So I'm going to go ahead and review and attach this record. And you can see that I, I now have um, Maynard P. and um, I've got the birth date. I'm just going to say that this validates birth and marriage information. I'll attach it, and then I'm going to add the spouse. So I have Mary Ethel Bennett, born in 1906. I don't have a birthplace on there, um, but I'm going to go ahead and create that new person and I get to add this marriage date as well and now I'm going to attach that. So that easily I have um, I have Maynard 1904 I'm going to go ahead and just quickly fix up that birth date 
because you'll remember that I have, well, I, I didn't add the um, World War II registration, but I can get it, this from Find a Grave easily enough. Um, the, down here, the birth date is 30 September 1903. So 30... September 1903 instead of just the vague 1904 and, and in Oklahoma and every place is having it be just Oklahoma. Um, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to say validated on find a grave. And if I would have added that World War II uh, registration, I'd have it validated there as well. So now that quickly, I've got a good birth date that's um, accurate. I've got a death date. I don't have a death place. I might go looking for that. But I now have this spouse as well. And that spouse needs all of her work done. And then I'll be able to seal Mary Ethel to my um, Maynard Perry that, I, that used to just be Maynard Wilson. So that's how quickly I'm able to find some information, add it before I take him to the temple. And... Um, and so I, 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 of course, want to do that. Now let me go back here and just real quickly re, um, demonstrate with the next person. So I can just, I could have just taken Fred to the temple, but if I open Fred's person page, uh, I'll just do it this way. If I go to Fred's person page, I am, am basically in the same situation. Uh, a vague birth date, no death date, and no spouse. And so let's see if I go to Ancestry this time. The first thing up with Ancestry is Fred S. Wilson, who I have a good birth date and a good death date. The parents are William R. and Martha E. So this is my guy, and I get a spouse. So just on the first source alone on Ancestry, I'm able to get accurate birth and death information, and I'm able to add in a spouse as well. And if I go to the find a grave, I'll have information about Flossie and I'll be able to take her to the temple as well. So you can see how important this is to gather this information in between the time we discover it and connect them to the ordinances.